Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Coming from your Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk the professionalized sort of sport of wrestling. Uh, with us tonight, we got an all-star cl- cast. Uh, first of all, the uh, proprietor of the Mayhem Mania. Um, hurriedly preparing for tonight's festivities. It's going to be a big one. It's Matt Carlin's, our, f- our friend in the mainstream media. What? We're not allowed to have scissors on this podcast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Podcasting with scissors? We're not allowed oh, to no. do that, Sorg? What? Oh, we're going to get in so much trouble. There will be so much blood tonight. Um, and with Don't us. You know what these are for? All right. <laughs> and with us to participate in the bleeding is Antonio Garza, Patreon extraordinaire, and of course, guy over there at the, the Wrestling Revolution. Com coming at us from El Paso, Texas, where I hope there isn't snow, or it's probably the apocalypse right now. Hello, Sor. Uh, no, there is no snow. It's actually pretty nice over here. It's sunny. Uh, it's good. It's good. I, I do not have scissors. I am not allowed to, to play with scissors anymore after that previous accident. That's right. That's right. It's in it's in the charter for this podcast. No scissors allowed, um, because we don't know where you live to send an ambulance. Uh, and also with us to uh, partake in the pain is uh, a brand new one. Uh, Matt Carlin's actually introduced us to this fellow. He's uh, John Fisher. Uh, I was first of, oh yeah, go ahead. Go story. ahead. We we got a new one with us. Tonight. I was really looking forward to introducing him this way because okay. I just want to introduce. Um, you might know him. You may have read his uh, his fine WWE related articles on the Inquisitor website me personally i know him as the cheerful one from the voices of the voiceless podcast and his name he's also a former co-worker of mine but not anymore now we're sworn enemies for life um so here's john fisher hey john yeah hi thank you so much for having me on i really appreciate it uh, that's a wonderful introduction that you have matt um goes to show where your expertise lies and that's teasing I love it. I don't have scissors, but what I do have is the most pretentious of waters, Fiji water. That's not a sponsor, by the way. Uh, think of it as the Lex Luger of water. So overrated, oh. it's stupid. But <laughs> thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks. It's great to get new blood in here and and hopefully not literally with the scissors, of course. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you guys are joining us. Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out so much more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This is the flagship, but we have the Indie Mayhem Show. We have the Midway wars and so many other shows and content great writing by uh, matt carlins as well up over there and you can subscribe to this and other shows on your audio and video formats with the links over there and you can also drop us a line the hotline is 412-206-WMS0 or that email address Thank you. Good times yeah. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com is the email. And you can also uh, join us here live in the chat room, live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com uh, to join us, be part of the chat, just like our good friends, like Tragar, like Riz, like uh, uh, Bobby F. J-Town. Even though he's sick, he's sticking around. Riz is in, or I'm sorry, I already said him. Wheels is in there as well, and everybody else that pops in and out through the night to uh, participate in the chat. Please also support the show if you'd like. It. Uh, and please just 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 uh, like us on 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 the Facebooks. Uh, leave a comment on iTunes. Um, but if you'd like, if you'd like to give back, like so many uh, great people have, a couple of them right here with us, go to Patreon.com/slash Wrestling Mayhem Show and become a Patreon. Get the gold. Get some exclusive content and a catch up and an update on what exactly is going on in the world behind the scenes of Wrestling Mayhem Show. Like Antonio Garza of the Wrestling Revolution.com. Like the Matthew and Jennifer. Uh, foundation for podcast betterment like ed burke who's our good friend up on twitter and like bo diggity Woo! Woo! who Woo! pays us every week so i say his name like that wrestling man uh, i'm sorry patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so let's get into our topics for this week um the big news this week as if you didn't know, Plaid is all over SE Scoops, for instance, uh, as I bring that up, because uh, Daniel Bryan did give his retirement speech uh, last night. Um, I, I, we'll get into why uh, the, the, the physical uh, issues that he had um, here in, in segment two. But, um, you know, 
I, I like to say, you know, I, I didn't think it was a bad Raw or anything by any means, but anything that did happen <laughs> to the betterment in advertising of uh, WWE Fastlane really seemed like it was it was certainly eclipsed by by how we ended with the with the speech um, last night that went well into. Geez, it was almost about eleven thirty here on the East Coast by the time they were done. They really let it go uh, last night. I thought, um, which makes you think. Uh, of, I think I heard that someone timed it at thirty five minutes. Thirty five minutes. Wow. I, I don't know if they counted everything that happened on the network after, right? Um, but that's a hell of a lot of time. That is. Um, so, uh, it, but anyways, he, he, he announced his retirement officially on Twitter. I guess uh, earlier in the day, got picked up by all the outlets. He's on Sports Center tonight. I don't know if that's that's happened as of as of our recording this yet. Um, how did you guys feel out of that one? One, how, how many were crying? Maybe by the end of that, a little bit of a tearjerker, of course. Yeah. We got some hands raised there all yeah. over the place. Um, so, uh, uh, Garza, what were your thoughts uh, going through that last night? Uh, you know, I, I actually wasn't as sad or mad as I thought I was going to be. As I started listening to his, uh, I guess, speech, uh, there, there was like this, uh, th- this feeling that, you know, it's something that we kind of saw coming uh, as the months went on and on and on, and we finally we finally know what's up. And it, it sucks. Uh, Daniel Bryan's a wrestler. He was probably the first guy that I, that I got behind when I first started watching Ring of Honor, and I've been following his career ever since. So he was like my guy in WWE. As soon as Punk left, I, I feel he was like the last stand against that corporate mentality. And so it is kind of heartbreaking that he's gone. But at the same time, uh, I'm kind of happy that, as you say, he, he got to be the guy uh, to a certain extent. And it's just gratefulness. I, I mean, he, he was a champion. Uh, he has a pretty lady. And... He's living the dream, you know. He's he is. It's an American dream. He gets to live with his lady and eat granola up in uh up in Washington State. I mean, I mean, you can't beat that. Uh, John, yeah. what are your thoughts uh, uh of Brian retiring last night as you were watching that? Uh, well, I did cry, so I got to say the tears were there, and, mm-hmm. and that's because uh, what wrestlers do is they connect with the fans in a way that uh, honestly is a very enigmatic. And even professional sports, I, I've been a fan of Pittsburgh sports for years. That's where I'm from, and uh, not an athlete retiring has never done that to me. I watch Shawn Michaels retire, Ric Flair, Edge, and he's my all-time favorite. You have to understand how you know sad I was for that. And now Daniel Bryan, uh, as fans, were kind of selfish because let's be honest, Bryan should have retired years ago. Uh, being in the industry for 16 years, multiple concussions. And he even said last night his first concussion was within five months of his debut, and he was only 18 years old. The times were different back then, and now with all the concussion uh, hoopla, if you will, uh, with the NFL and so on and so forth, he really should have been done a long ago. But that's what made Daniel Bryan so great. He wanted to stay for the fans. He even said it last night. And uh, Garza, you brought up a really good point uh, when Punk left and he kind of started the trend of indie wrestlers coming to the WWE and now NXT, and we saw how big that monster is right now. I saw a really interesting quote that I want to really uh, bring to everybody else here. Uh, CM Punk opened the door for indie wrestlers, but Daniel Bryan kept it permanently open. Can you guys agree with that? Yeah. I want that. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. Um, uh, Matt, uh, what, what were your thoughts uh, last night? I know I, I, I know the, 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 the wife of Carlin's uh, was uh, telling her how she was crying, at least in some of the messages or online that I, I was reading. Yeah, I think I was the only person who didn't cry, but it's not because I didn't I wasn't it's not because I wasn't sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. because it's because I'm a heartless monster. Um, <laughs> well, well, the, news, and, uh, the, 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 the the local news business will do that to a person. I understand it. it, it that'll happen. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, um, I tell you, the thing that keeps popping into my brain whenever I think about this, this epic 30 minute um, farewell speech that like people are calling, you know, one of the greatest moments in raw history, one of the greatest moments in wrestling history. I don't know if I'm ready to go there yet, but we'll give it a few uh, months or years before we decide that. But the thing that kept coming to my mind was I thought this guy couldn't cut a good promo whenever he came into <laughs> WWE. That was always the knock on him. And like the, the big knock on him was always like, he can't talk. 
And his farewell is a 35 minute talking segment that is universally praised as the greatest thing that ever happened. And, you know, that kind of speaks to like the evolution of Daniel Bryan. He, he was obviously a brilliant wrestler technically in the ring, but what he did and how he transformed himself um, in those years before he won the um, the world title at uh, WrestleMania 30 is phenomenal. And just like embracing the entertainment side of it. And I know that kind of makes the hardcore wrestling fans kind of sneer a little bit whenever you say that, but he was able to combine both worlds. He brought, you know, all sides together in peace and unity. He brought those casuals and those hardcores together. And I, you know, when will we ever see another guy that, the entire crowd is universally behind like Daniel Bryan. That's the closest thing we've ever been to probably to Stone Cold that, that we've been since Stone Cold. Stone Cold, everyone was behind Stone Cold. Bryan, everyone was behind Bryan. And will we have to wait another 15 years or longer for another guy like that? It's hard to say. And, and it was somebody that were, and there was somebody that, that everybody, <laughs> was that Ambrose we heard in the background? <laughs> Jim likes yeah. to think everyone's behind Ambrose, but the guys secretly are mad at him because all the women like him. Apparently, but that's a different topic for another day. Apparently, and he's and he's he's freaking people out on local news as you posted on the Facebook group today. Um, that was a very interesting promo, our our, our new spot. But um, um, hey, uh, from uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas, our our buddy, voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, is actually on the line. He snuck in here under the wire. Um, I wanted to uh, touch base on you uh, as well. I mean, you're a guy. You had a, a really good write up. Uh, Eamon Payton, that's who we were talking to. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I had to get into this conversation. I'm sorry. Right, right. Not a problem. But um, but you were you you got, you had a really good post earlier um, about having the opportunity to see him in a couple of, of, of instances. Um, uh, can you talk about that and kind of your thoughts as as uh, as uh, Brian was going out here? Well, definitely. I think. I mean, also, well, one being there for WrestleMania 30, which is based off of everything that happened last night, is a real like while I was there kind of feeling like being there for that huge of a moment. Um, but also, uh, uh, I think I've told this story before on the show, but, uh, myself and, uh, Sorgatron here and some of the other Mayhem crew guys, uh, went up to Cleveland for a Jakara pro show. Uh, we had been planning on going for weeks and, uh, uh, it was announced like maybe I think the week before that, uh, a recently fired WWE superstar, Daniel Bryan was, uh, going to be making some appearances which is something I never thought I'd be able to do, which is seeing Daniel Bryan Russell uh, being, you know, in that kind of environment, I should say, uh, since, you know, being from the state of Texas, it never really kind of came out, came around to those kind of parts. But um, I think he really has transcended um, what it means to be successful in professional wrestling. I just, the thing that I really took so much from last night was some of the cuts to the crowd and, and like children crying, that, that, you know, he had to retire. It wasn't just, you know, these 20-somethings who, you know, followed him in Ring of Honor and, and, you know, all this other stuff he did on the independents. This is a guy that really was important to a lot of people. Um, and, and I agree completely in the fact that he definitely did, uh, as that quote mentioned, like, keep the doors open for independent wrestling talent to come to WWE. Sami Zayn, I think, tweeted saying, if it wasn't for Daniel Bryan, the people that have been signed as of lately to NXT would have never gotten signed. Um, and I completely agree with that. He has changed the game when it comes to what you need to be a successful pro wrestler. Certainly. Uh, and for me, it, it, se- it feels like, you know, it seems like he's been taken away from us way too soon. Right. You know, even though he does have a great, you know, 16 year career, um, he, he does have a lot of, you know, it, it, not just the WWE. Obviously, there there's plenty you can see on the network of him, but there's also plenty you can go in the back catalogs of Ring of Honor or other promotions that are certainly have already capitalized and have best best of editions out there, um, like we've seen in the past with CM Punk and other guys that have gotten to this level. Um, but we also, you know, you mentioned the Stone Cold aspect that that genuine that genuine authentic organic thing that happened with him and that story over that he's he's going to be not just the crowd but he's the one that hijacked raw or via the crowd of course um to to get something on this i I mean you you wonder if he he really expected in the world wwe to get anything above an intercontinental title at that point right um and obviously you you saw what happened there and how 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 that happened 
Um, it, it is really an interesting story that I think we're going to be talking about for a while, just like we do the Attitude Era. Um, kind of that anomaly in wrestling. And uh, and I love that, 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 that it is Seattle and Platt is back all over these videos and pictures that I'm seeing um, <laughs> around the internet today uh, of him. And I think it's, it's really cool to see. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of memories, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, um, and I think we're going to be talking about him from weeks to come. Um, as, as, um, what, what, see what's next for him. You know, I'm kind of curious to see what, what happens. Is he a guy that comes that back like a Booker T and all these other guys as a pundit in some, in some, for, some fashion, or, or is he going to have some kind of his version of whatever the, the, the Shawn Michaels hunting show is going to be for Daniel Bryan, right? Uh, oh man. <laughs> could you imagine? Um, yeah. I, I was just going to jump in real quick. So you guys mentioned a couple times about the first time you saw Daniel Bryan. And uh, as I've stated on this show, and I can't believe I admit this more than once, but I'm going to again, um, that I was extremely late to the Ring of Honor train. So when Daniel Bryan showed up in WWE on NXT, that was literally the first time I'd ever seen him in the flesh wrestling. I knew him only by reputation. Um, And then he has a match that I'm sure a lot of you guys remember on NXT against Chris Jericho, who's world champion at the time. And it's an amazing match. And after the match is over, it's obvious to me. And I'm convinced in one match, oh, this is this guy is awesome. Everybody was right. And from there, you're just you're on your way. Um, I just thought that was interesting that he could come with that much that big of a reputation, sight unseen for someone like me. And then to win me over in one match, basically, um, just kind of shows how good he is, was. All right. <laughs> Riz is bringing up in the chat room, of course. Uh, he says him hugging Connors nearly made him ball at the Connors' house uh, watching WrestleMania. Uh, more so than Punk and Austin, he had the audience in the palm of his hands, literally. And, and that's the thing that the, the whole kids, the whole kids aspect, like you know, the, the Connor story, of course, everybody knows. But uh, it, being that underdog, he really kind of epitomized that being the small guy, right? Uh, being kind of the awkward guy, being not the John Cena's of the world. And, and I think it's really interesting. And, and again, like I said, give more of these guys a chance. You know, without this, we might not see, you know, the John Cena Invitational that has so many guys uh, have the opportunity to to step up over this last year. So (laughs) I I, I hope I hope that it is a not an active WWE or anything in this, but that Daniel Bryan, I think, out of anybody in the last, you know, five or even 10 years has been the one guy that the audience has vocalized their um, connection towards and how they should capitalize on that more, you know, how that, how they should sort of go in on, you know, and, and take those reactions and, and use that to fuel what, what you do going forward. Cause I, I, I think it's amazing everything for Daniel Bryan said, but we still got to look at it in the sense of, you know, every, everything does say that, you know, Daniel Bryan was not supposed to win the WWE title at WrestleMania 30. No. You know, when it came to plans. Uh, it was forced, basically. It, it had to happen. Um, and, you know, I think it's those genuine connections that people develop for certain wrestlers that can help grow business. And and hopefully, I think WWE will capitalize on that more going forward. Certainly. I mean, go ahead. I I sometimes wonder if deep down and if Vince McMahon secretly regrets having going back on his plans for WrestleMania 30 and crowning Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30, because it feels like creatively, at least in a fan reaction kind of way, um, that WWE has been paying the price for uh, surrendering to the uh, public onslaught of goodwill towards Daniel Bryan for the past couple of years. They paid the price for it. They've definitely paid the price for it um, with the attempts to get the Roman Reigns where they want him to be. And I think it, and I think part of Daniel Bryan's uh, legacy is that it emboldened the audience to truly believe that if we want something bad enough, we can get it. If we hate something bad enough, we can make it not happen. If we cheer Daniel Bryan long enough, he'll be champion. If we boo Batista and Randy Orton long enough and John Cena, eventually they'll give us our guy. And, and you know, and, but and at the end of the day, that's not necessarily how wrestling is supposed to work. 
Um, that's not, Hey, I'm not complaining, but I, I, I think it's, it, it's not how it's supposed to work in a sense that what we've seen in those cases, because it was taken to such an extreme, but it was taken to that extreme in a sense, because in, in theory, in, when running a, a particularly a wrestling business, the reactions of your audience and how your audience is gauging your talents and how they're uh, accepting or not accepting them should be how you feel your product going forward. I feel uh, yeah. you should yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I, I think that's a really excellent point that I just think there's a big difference between not liking somebody like a Roman Reigns or a Batista because it's cool or not liking him just to not like what's going on. I feel like the biggest uh, difference is that the creative aspect for Roman Reigns is, isn't uh, well logical at all. And they're forcing him down our throats. And I hate to use that term because I feel like a mark when I use that term. But it, it's very true. Vince wants him there. Well, now it's Braun Strowman. Vince wants Braun Strowman on top. Uh, who's going to be next? It's not someone that the fans pick. If the fans can watch a good heel work uh, like The Rock – or you know, even go back to the NWO. Yeah, they were cool to not like them, but at least the storylines made sense, and there were heroes that were built up. Right now, let's fast forward a year here. What big star has been be, has been created right now with Seth Rollins? <laughs> Anybody else under under the age well, of thirty four? The injuries, the injuries have a lot to do. True, with that. true. The injuries have had a lot to do with that. But, um, but, but it does speak to to the void that's left when Daniel Bryan tries to re- goes up when Daniel Bryan with Daniel Bryan gone, there is a massive void, not just in WWE, but you know, in professional wrestling, largely the best technical wrestler bar none for what a decade more is gone. Mm-hmm. So who's that guy now? You know, well, I, and, and, and stay with me here when I say this, cause I know this will sound crazy. But I watched a recent Vince Russo shoot interview preview, and he, he was talking about him booking in 98, uh, particularly with Austin, and how he had grown in popularity, and, and the company put more on his back in a sense. And he basically said that that was based off of the fact that each week they were listening directly to what the audience was saying and reacting to, and the next week of television was based off of those reactions. And, you know, that's kind of a good way to do things. Like, WWE doesn't really do that they you know kind of stick to a plan and say okay we'll do you know we're going to do something or we'll do a month or two months of something to get somebody to get to this point where the crowd would like them instead of listening to the audience and Uh, and going based i think it has to be a kind of like a a 50 50 way you work it A, a good booker is he who can he or she i guess who can identify what the fans want, but at the same time, uh, they should be able to book a wrestler and make the, the fans believe they want him. Mm-hmm. You know, they need, a booker needs to know how to, how to sell your, your, your product so that the fans like want it, regardless if, if they affect if it's good or not. So uh, I think uh, I think that's where, where W is failing right now because uh, – they fail. I mean, they have like, for instance, Brian and Reigns, and and they fail to just try to fix both of them together at the same time. So they, the fans, are, think they're getting what they want, but at the same time, we're pushing what we want. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, and, 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 and again, not to make this into like a conversation on like how WWE creative is or whatever. I just mean in the sense of like Daniel Bryan did have an amazing career, but he also could have had more. Mm-hmm. I, I feel. I, you know, even with, you know, the injuries that he accrued, he could have had more. He could have been the face of the company. And also, I mean, I think we've been this before because I kind of feel the same way about Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think he was kind of taken in the prime of his career, well, maybe past the peak. But still, he's a guy that could have stuck around. I mean, could you imagine the you know Jericho comes back and makes you know a certain amount of impact. The Rock comes back and makes a certain amount of impact. Do you do you imagine if the if Stone Cold could have come back every two or three years and made some kind of impact? You know, just to mix it up a little bit, because I mean, he was the peak guy, right? He's yeah. bigger than Hogan in his era, right? And, and and how many people that brings back versus you know who I, I don't want to say who are settling on, but uh, but you know the possibilities of something like that could. have been really really interesting i i'd love to see 
Stone Cold and Punk, that will now never happen. I'd love to see Stone Cold and Daniel Bryan, you know, and, and uh, you know, down the line, the Stone Cold John Cena, I don't think ever happened, for instance, right? That would be incredible to see those two eras come together. Um, but you never know. But, but uh, another point that a lot of people have been making that kind of goes with that is like, how many matches now are we never going to get the chance to see in WWE? Mm-hmm. We're never going to get to see Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens. We're never going to get to see Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn. Right. Or, you know, AJ Styles or, you know, numerous other guys. Right. Nakamura. Nakamura. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Well, um, I want to touch on uh, some other things going on with that. But first, I want to give a shout out to our friends. Hey, guys, it's National Pizza Day. National Pizza Day. National <laughs> Pizza Day. <laughs> I should have known I could count on you for that one. National <laughs> Pizza Day. And it's always Pizza Day here on Tuesdays at Mayhem Studios. Uh, this, Of course, the, the Mayhem Nation is wide, is all over the place. Uh, but we do have a lot of guests in here uh, through the night with Awesome Cast with Indie Mayhem Show, and we like to feed those people. They come in during their their lunch or their dinner hour, and I uh, like to make it a little easy for them. And uh, and big thanks to Slice on Broadway that's been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for uh, almost two years here. Uh, it, it's like it's it, you know it, it, when I walk in there, it's like uh, it's like Cheers instead of uh, yelling Norm, they yell Sorgatron, and I really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and right here in Beachview. Beachview's coming up, baby, and it starts with Slice on Broadway. Literally, they're right at the end of the tracks. Uh, so go uh, uh, check them out if you're in the area. Our good friends from the Jagoff podcast were in here last Thursday. We were filming a spot with them, um, talking to uh, one of the drivers of the upcoming Monster Jam. Uh, I think that posted today if you go to Jagoff.com. Um, and uh, I, I got a tweet right afterwards because I had to go off to a meeting. They, they went out to dinner, and, of course, they said when they're in – and when they're in the neighborhood, they got to do as we do, and uh, and they headed over to Slice and check that out as well. And so many do our Patreons, our fans, our uh, people that listen to the show, our, our interviewees stop out there and uh, all get to partake. Big thanks to Rico and the crew out there, been supporting us for a while. And uh, go check them out, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, um, and also look for Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram, and let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. All right, so uh, Garza, you, uh, again, kind of, t- you know, Daniel Bryan is the big news right now. So, uh, but of course, why did he retire, uh, Garza? You had a, you had a little bit of a, 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 a angle you wanted to take on this. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, we've been talking about Daniel Bryan since yesterday, uh, but there's a, a big elephant that th- now surrounds the room, and that's a uh, concussions. Uh, there is. It's, this is not about really bashing WWE because all oh, they wouldn't allow Daniel Bryan to wrestle or anything. But now with the test that Daniel took and he was able to, to figure out things about his brain, how many guys are in the roster right now on concussions? I mean, Daniel, I mean, Bully Ray or Bubba Ray Dudley, that guy has like 10 concussions. Mm. Uh, Dreamer, Ziggler, I mean, Carmella, is, she, she's in NXT right now, and she already got one. So well, I, I think there's going to be big consequences coming from this uh, because how many people are going to start, like, looking for those tests, like, on their own to see how their brains are? And, I mean, how many people are going to start considering retirement after, after this? Like, where, where do you guys see this – concussion uh, concussion topic going for WWE. Well, I think it's going to go straight uh, to where Daniel Bryan is, and that's retirement and being able to walk and think whenever you're 45 years old. I mean, heck, the culture's changing. And I and you made up a, a great point when you said, well, are they going to go look out on their own? Well, CM Punk did talk uh, very uh, poorly about the company, and that's where the lawsuit came up with the whole staff infection situation. Let's say WWE does uh, – find out he did had staff and fix it. Does he leave the company? I don't know, but maybe that wouldn't have uh, gave Daniel Bryan the initiative to look elsewhere. Perhaps he could have stayed within the company. I'm not sure, but I think CM Punk uh, in with the negative reactions that he was giving with Dr. Amon and the, and the medical team really started this whole trend of, well, maybe let's not trust just one issue. And also that's WWE's case of we need to be a little bit more serious because Punk could sue for malpractice if everything comes up. And it, what if Brian did get the clearance from WWE, but not from outside doctors, and he gets hurt in the ring? That's on them. And Vince McMahon didn't want Kurt Angle to come back, so the reports say, because something could happen to him. 
Uh, it's all about safety now. The culture is changing. It's changing in the NFL, and it's changing here. Yeah, I, I, I think I, obviously more concussion testing and more uh, ability for th- these things to be spotted is always a great thing, um, without a doubt. Um, I find it I find it extremely interesting. I do think there is a level of I don't want to say stubbornness in a sense, but a level of of fighting through injuries that's sort of instilled in pro wrestlers that. Uh, it is 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 difficult and hard and kind of sad, but also is just a thing that I think exists. Uh, oh, I mean, obviously there are reports, but all the reports said that you know Brian was more than willing to you know work on the independents if you know WWE wasn't willing enough to clear him. He wanted to wrestle still, like he wanted to still compete no matter the time that he spent out of the ring and the injuries that he's had. Um, I think that um, there is that level of well, I'm still going to compete. I still want this. I still want to do this. Um, obviously, I think more testing's better. Uh, I think we mentioned before how Daniel Bryan has sort of uh, instituted a new, almost a new style to how WWE wrestling is done. It's not the same style you got 10 years ago or, or 15 years ago. And that's great almost from an artistic point of view, but also in the sense of while that has changed, the schedules haven't changed. The amount of times these wrestlers are working hasn't changed. The amount of bumps they're doing has increased. Um, I think that plays a real big factor um, because you you sort of expect it to deliver every single time you're out there, no matter if it's on uh, WrestleMania or a, a house show in front of maybe a couple thousand. Like you're expected to deliver and you're expected to give people their money's worth. Um, and just the amount of dates they're working and the amount of shows they have to do, uh, it's very difficult. I can only imagine how difficult it could be, you know, one, just working in general, but also with concussions and also with multiple other injuries, how that plays a factor. Yeah, there's interesting uh, parallels between um, WWE and the NFL. Um, when the concussion thing hit in the NFL, several years ago there was all this resistance from players there were even players who would tell you who would tell reporters to their face yeah i may be a vegetable in 30 years but i'm gonna make as much money as i can now because i don't care what happens at the end of my life but as time has gone on you've seen more nfl players and you've even seen a few now retiring early really good players who are in their prime um, and have no reason to be retiring other than concern for their long-term health. Um, But Eamon is right. Hashtag Eamon is right. Um, (laughs) Wrestlers want to wrestle. Daniel Bryan had to be dragged kicking and screaming from professional wrestling. Don't ever forget that. I mean, sure, he he had one more test and it convinced him to finally retire. But despite all those concussions, despite all the wear and tear that he knew, he knew all along the wear and tear his body had taken – over all those years of professional wrestling. He knew that he had suffered those three concussions within the first year that he was a professional wrestler. He knew all that, and he still wanted to come back. And it was only after a third, a fourth, a fifth opinion that he was finally convinced to step away. Certainly, certainly. So, I mean, this is, you know, like you talked about that, you know, are we going to, do you think generally, you you mentioned how many, what percentage do you think we're going to have of early retirees? You know, are we going to see this number increase? Are, are you know, are we going to look at situations like going into WrestleMania where it seems like all the big talent is getting injured? Even NXT seems to be uh, 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 bitten by the bug with Finn Balor lately. Are those going to turn into well, maybe they're not coming back. Obviously, different injuries, but but you know, as and, and actually, does anybody know what this test was that was so different than what they usually do? No, I, I don't think anybody knows honestly. Yeah, I'm not sure if this part's on the record. So, uh, it'll be interesting. You know, again, do do they take more? Do we see more retires? Um, and then, how much more important is it going to be for these guys to take care of themselves? You know, is is wrestling going to? How much safer can can the wrestling get? You know, um, but I, I think I think we'll either see one of two things in that case. We'll either see us uh, uh, the the style of wrestling kind of go more the way of what we saw five or 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. or we will see a 
uh, and this is less likely, but I feel more necessary, a decrease in schedules, um, uh, less shows. Um, I don't think they'll ever do an off season, but I think that they definitely, I think for the longevity of their performers should look into cutting down some of their shows. Right, right. At least, at least, yeah, for the performers, for, you know, the, the, you know, John Cena goes away for at least three months a year just to heal up. Right. Um, because that wear and tear. Maybe even just sending people down to the performance center for a month and you do a stint down there and you get to be in the performance center and you get to, you know, rehab if you have something nagging Mm -hmm. and you get to be on NXT still and you can still get to beef up that and you can still work the Florida circuit down there for the NXT, NXT B team and, and you could be a big draw for them while you're kind of recuperating, you know, it's, it's a good idea. They got to think long-term maintenance um, for a lot of these guys. Cause yeah, like Amos said, you've got to, you've got to work smarter. Wrestlers, when they get older, they end up, they all work smarter. John Cena used to do moves. He doesn't do those moves anymore. Cause he doesn't have to, cause he's over like Rover and it doesn't matter anymore. Um, AJ Styles, we saw AJ Styles and TNA doing crazy stuff. And then a couple years ago, we saw him live at a Ring of Honor show. And AJ Styles is suddenly this super economic performer in the ring. He doesn't really do all that crazy stuff anymore. Sure, like if it's a big match, he's in New Japan, it's Okada. Yeah, he's going to go <laughs> all out. But on those other days, he's smart. you got to get smarter as you get older. I mean, how about oh. how about that, Matt? You you and I both witnessed that match he had uh, for uh, Ring of Honor TV in West Virginia against Matt Seidel, and and how how amazing that match was. And to consider, he's probably doing half the stuff he was ten years ago because but he was still. a better wrestler. Because he's a better wrestler now. Exactly. That that's the proof. That's the proof that you're a great wrestler. You don't have to do as much as he used to do. Right. Right. Um, yeah, they're talking in the chat room here, of course. Uh, Mike's saying if the writing was a little bit better, they wouldn't have to depend on such long matches on Raw. I don't know if that's so much the case. You I, don't know, know I don't know the length of the matches is the case. I think no. the amount of matches they have to do is the Right, and two, what they're doing... Hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, please, two hours. Big wrestling <laughs> fan saying too much wrestling. That's okay. We got the network. We can fill the rest of the time with that. USA, come to your senses. My God. Even even when you have Triple H saying, man, I wish we had two hours <laughs> on their own network, I think there's a problem here, okay? And everybody's feeling it. And I don't really see... That's a whole other discussion we're not going to have here. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's led to Daniel Bryan's concussion in particular. <laughs> but, uh, but no, certainly. Um... Jeez. Well, we'll see what happens from this. Um, you know, like I said, the the injury discussion will, will, will keep going. We're seeing uh, WWE, I guess, suffer from it, and uh, which which strangely is going to make for a more interesting WrestleMania in my mind. So uh, we'll see well, what happens. Maybe. There. We'll, 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 see how, we'll see how it goes after Fastlane. Uh, you know, you know, I I think the coolest stuff comes when uh when you know they're kind of up against the wall, anyways, as has been proven. Many, many times with the WWE. So, all right. Well, we're going to come back uh, with the big question. And, of course, the long-awaited, I know John's over there uh, 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 ready for it, and the arts and crafts have been happening, the Mayhem Mania. And, and geez, I don't know I don't know what's going to happen out of that. Look, are you stretching, Garza? Is that what's happening there? Yeah, I'm getting ready. <laughs> getting ready. <laughs> the hottest... Uh, I mean, do we call it a game? The hottest thought ex- experiment to the to... hottest thought experiment on the internet, sorry. Oh, geez, there's your teaser right there. <laughs> the but hottest it... competitive thought experiment on the internet. But in the meantime, uh, uh, our partner site indywrestling.us, Matt Carlin, is doing great write-ups for us over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. But he also does around the indies for your multimedia look, social media look at what's happened. Hey, AJ Styles has been on the indies. Find out why and how and where over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, but also, we're starting... I'm hoping this becomes an ongoing thing. Uh, there's a lot of guys that have been through Pittsburgh, been through some of these indies, and they may seem familiar to you. Okay, maybe not this guy because he's under a mask. But uh, uh, we were taking a look this week at uh, Kalisto, the uh, most recent um, U.S. champion in WWE, and uh, apparently reunited with his good buddy Sankara this week as Lucha Dragons. That's good to see. Um, weird since he has a singles title. Uh, but he was through here in Pittsburgh, uh, three stints with the International Wrestling Cartel, including um, Super Indie 10, where uh, he was in the opening round against El Generico, 
who bears a striking resemblance in body type to Sami Zayn. I'm just going to leave that there. And uh, and check out this match um, that he was... Uh, well, one uh, the, one match was a Lucha Libre tag match, including, I know, Eamon's favorite person, Lowrider. Um, and, uh, and another one uh, uh, from Cage Fury, uh, where he's taking on uh, Logan Shulo, now the drifter in NXT, Johnny Gargano, and Colin Delaney. There's a few names there. And, of course, at the time, he was known as Samurai Del Sol. That may sound familiar if you're familiar with some of his moves in the WWE. Go check it out. Uh, check out some of the titles back in the day around the 2010-2011 era with the IWC Indie Wrestling.us. We're going to take a look back at... Hey, Matt. We're going to take a look back at how you discovered the Wrestling Mayhem show from our 10-year anniversary party uh, about a month ago at our friends Looking for Group. Uh, and we'll be right back with a big question. Well, um, a long time ago when I discovered that there was this thing called podcasts, I discovered this app called Stitcher. And I found out that I could search for things on the Stitcher app. So I searched for wrestling. And one of the first podcasts that came up in the uh, after I searched for wrestling on Stitcher was the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So I blindly started listening to this Wrestling Mayhem show, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I listened to it, you know, a couple more times, and then one day I was listening to it, and the craziest thing happened. They said that they all lived in Pittsburgh. How did this happen? That's how I discovered the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, and I sent uh, probably a few badly worded emails over time, and then eventually... I don't know, somehow sort of eventually welcomed me into the fold. We're back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, uh, and go check out all the videos. We've got a bunch of them coming up there on the YouTube from the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 10-year party. Plenty, plenty more in the weeks to come. Celebrating 10 years of podcasting with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So now it's time for the big question. And, uh, of course, LB is off um, this week. Uh, I think he is uh, mourning the Daniel Bryan harder than all of us because I know he discovered him early. He was the guy that introduced a lot of us to Ring of Honor. So in the place, the man behind Riz Plays Games here in Pittsburgh uh, is on the line. Also, insert coin to begin.com. Where did I put you at? Uh, just to, yeah, welcome to the podcast of Too Many Hangouts. I am, um, I am very you ti- – you're, you're saying this because I'm very. I'm a very small person, right? So yeah, yeah. So you're kind of hiding okay. behind your title there as well. There you are. You're peeking there up I a little am. bit. There he is. There he is. Hi. Riz is with us. He's got the big okay. question for this week. What is that question, good sir? Keeping with the theme of the the, the week here, uh, my question to you guys is, is there somebody up and coming in the WWE or in NXT that can drive the fans crazy like Daniel Bryan did and keep it going for however long they can. Mm-hmm. Like, so, is there, is there somebody next an- another Daniel Bryan type? Like, I and mean, we're talking about like huge fan favorite, like somebody that yes. really kind of changes the, the, the flow of things because mm-hmm. people are so behind mm-hmm. them. Yeah. If, yes. if, if, if I can go, uh, um, go I think, see, I don't want to say it's obvious, but just judging by the talent, uh, up and down the main roster and even in the NXT. Our NXT band's not for this segment, I hope. But uh, I say it's Sami Zayn. Um, just the the magic that uh, transpired when he won the NXT championship, that year and a half long chase for the title. Um, and and w- just watching the reaction, I mean, you're, you're talking about a Daniel Bryan like uh, pop. Sami Zayn got that. Mm-hmm. The fans got behind Zayn. Not only is music infectious, so is his personality, his smile, his drive, his work ethic. If you don't like Sami Zayn, then you don't have a soul. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But <laughs> no, you're not. That's no, <laughs> no, you're I'm not. not. No, I'm not. But that's the point I'm trying to make. Sami Zayn is like is the people's champion, and right. he will be. Not to steal from The Rock, but can you guys agree with that? I mean, that's just, that's my take. I think Sami Zayn's the next guy, the next Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan. Oh yeah. Certainly. Uh, I mean, it, it, as long as the injuries don't get in his way, I think he's definitely on that trajectory, right? So, uh, I got one. Go ahead. I got one. Go ahead. I, I'm not the biggest fan, and Matt Mike knows this, but Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Bailey. He took mine, by the way. Yeah. I, Keeping Bailey, up. Bailey has 
that charisma and that like user friendliness that it's really easy to to connect with her. And and what I find so much interesting about Bailey right now, talking about Daniel Bryan, is that just like Daniel Bryan wasn't the cookie cutter uh, huge guy, Bailey's not the cookie cutter like total diva girl. And that's like at, at the same time the the danger about Bailey, but it's it's what makes her so unique and so better, and why I think she's gonna be like. The next big thing, mm-hmm. uh, she she can be the next John Cena and Daniel Bryan combined. Because wow! Like, no, he's, he's as a connection, and and she's a good wrestler. I can see it. I can see it definitely. Yeah. Uh, going off of Tonio's, because mine's sort of similar to his. Uh, if we're, if we're going the realm realm of women uh, as well, uh, Sasha Banks. Um, I don't think I. I don't think there's a person out there that has been so widely praised as her. I think there's very few, minuscule few people who would have bad things to say about Sasha Banks. Um, obviously, there's people like Tonio who, you know, aren't big Bailey fans. Um, or there are people like, uh, in contrast, like once I know Riz mentioned at that NXT show that uh, said some nice things about Bailey. Uh, which is not cool. Um, but Don't bring that up, please. No, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, th- I think she's one of those people that can really transcend. She has that wrestling ability. She also has that personality and that ability to connect with people. Um, I, I think that's really the big, the big driving forces, and that what that would be make her. That's what would make her so similar to Daniel Bryan in that sense. Okay. Uh, so I, I got one, and I don't know. I don't know if this is. In the, I hope this is in the realm of your question, but I, I, I think he's the one that actually has a head start, of course, coming in. And and some the discussions of how things are booked the last couple of weeks makes you think they're definitely putting him in the Daniel Bryan role as far as the programming goes. But uh, I think AJ Styles could be that guy, uh, very very next, um, because I mean people can't stop chanting him. Like, like I, 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 segments are happening where he's not even in, and I hear people start to chant. And in my mind, that's usually when people are being assholes and chanting CM Punk and realizing they're chanting AJ Styles instead, like, is significant for me. And I feel like if they keep going with this, um, I feel like hopefully they're leading into that more than they normally do. Like, for instance, they did with Daniel Bryan, um, you know, before they actually let him go with things. Um, I think he's definitely on the trajectory to do that. Um, and hopefully they don't mess it up. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Mike? Um, I, w- I feel like this one's the most obvious. And this is just maybe me. And it might not be on the forefront of everyone's mind because he's injured right now. But Cesaro. Mm. Hmm. I feel like Cesaro has been kind of the same way that early Daniel Bryan was, only Cesaro didn't have the benefit of being in the NXT competition. Like, Cesaro's been given shitty gimmicks. He's been not been used properly. And I think if him and Tyson Kidd didn't get injured at the same time, they were on the trajectory of the Daniel Bryan and Kane Team Hell No team up where people were really, really starting to get behind both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they were getting comedy bits, and they were having good matches, and they they were starting to rise up together. And I think Cesaro could have burst forward from that. And I still think he can. I mean, if they come back around the same time, or if if Cesaro just comes back and he's automatically thrust into a feud of Kevin Owens or something like that, like someone to give him that boost... I think Cesaro is the next guy because he has more going for him than Brian did because he is the the build Vince McMahon is looking for. Like, dude is personable as hell. Like, he can speak 18 different languages or whatever it is. Like, they just need to strap the rocket onto him like they did for Roman Reigns, and I feel like that would be just right there. 
Mm -hmm. I, and then he had the closest thing I made to anybody of like a yes movement style thing with the whole Cesaro section stuff. And it was so unfortunate to when he got injured because he had built a good deal of momentum more than any of the pushes he had gotten before, you know? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt, do you have one? <laughs> he's, he's working on that. Um, well, what was the question? Who is the next Daniel Bryan? Okay, I have an or, idea. Or close to Daniel Bryan. No, I get it. I get it. Who's who's the next darling? Who's the one yes. all the fans are going to demand? All right, I, I, got think I know off, where you're going. I got a little off the wall idea. I got a little off the wall suggestion, and it's kind of cool because he's kind of like like twice the size of Daniel Bryan while being generally the exact same person as Daniel Bryan. Luke Harper mm. might be the next Daniel Bryan. Yeah. I feel like a kind of like a sense of uh, general appreciation of Luke Harper. And I think it's only going to build over time. He's he has awesome matches. He's almost always entertaining. He finds a way to draw your attention while he's standing next to those other two goofs behind Bray Wyatt and kind of make you appreciate it. While he's making a silly face or doing something weird with his eyes, you know, he's just an all around entertaining guy. He never does anything that makes you hate him. Really, I mean, he's always kind of awesome. Um, he's going to have this match with Brock Lesnar. I'm going to be like, let's see Luke Harper kick some ass. So. Um, yeah, I think, um, I, hey, it may not happen tomorrow, but in time, I could see the fans demanding Luke Harper. Okay. Um, one answer that I thought was going to be mentioned, and I'm surprised it hasn't, uh, I think he's not, he, he's, he's champion now. When he gets, when Finn Balor gets called back, called up to the WWE, when he does, He's going to be in that same realm as Tyler Breeze, Cesaro, and ever, like all those meshed in one. But he will have AJ Styles in his corner, I, th I think, for the most majority of it. So I'm kind of just shooing him off a, a little bit uh, because I just thought of something. Kalisto. Kalisto has been putting on match after match, after match of really good wrestling. And he's one of those guys who is by far improved. He's better than Sin Cara. He's better than anybody they put him with. He's better than Del Rio right now. And they're just going to push him to Del Rio and just bring him back and forth, back and forth, like a ping pong ball using the United States title. They have something with Kalisto. They have their Ray liked. I'm not saying it's Ray yet, but they have their Ray light. And I, I want to see them push him a little bit more. Sorry, no, Ray light sounds like a very off brand version of Sunny Delight. No, I was I was going more I was going more Bud, but I, I That's guess. Fair. Like it, it's Ray, spelled, Ray it is, sounds like the tiniest wrestler of all time. <laughs> it, 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 it is spelled L I T E, -E so not L I G H T, L I T E, like all the other. So, beers. so it's an off-brand light bright. Is what you said yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Say light bright. Yeah, light bright. I know what light bright is, Riz. <laughs> <laughs> all right well everybody let us know w uh hashtag wms big question what is your uh what's your answer to the big question this week uh who's the next daniel bryan who, who do you think is going to take the the crowd and maybe wrestlemania 30 something or other by storm let's go 35 who's going to be up there by 35 i think that's a good number uh john for anybody cena. john it's going to be john, <laughs> john cena, uh, john cena. I, I, guys, I, have, I have good feelings about this john cena guy yeah yeah he seems like a real up-and-comer <laughs> Uh, I know. Uh, so with that, let's head over. It's what you've been waiting for. Let's be honest. Yes. Nobody wants to hear about Daniel Bryan. Uh, well, uh, well, well. Uh, it's <laughs> it's the Mayhem Mania. It's time. I, I really should have music for it at this point, but it, it, it is on. He is ready. He's got the mini big board. From the bakers of the big board comes... The small board. You know what? It's more well, readable. Have a lot of time to prepare tonight. It's honestly more readable somehow. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll stick with this one. But I bet it's going to be awful to make corrections on. Well, I've got yeah, a true. smaller tipped sharpie tonight. So, <laughs> hey, everybody, hey. pick one match 
and we all ruined that one match. Matt, the size <laughs> of your tip doesn't matter. Just remember that. Oh. There you go. Mac Harlins, <laughs> what is the deal this week? What are we doing? What does the what does the landscape look like? Jed, let's do a couple little pieces of house cleaning here first, Sore. Okay. Because I know there was people asking about Daniel Bryan because everything about this show has to do with Daniel Bryan. That's just the way it has to be this week. Um, but people were asking about Daniel Bryan because in previous rounds, actually before the last round, Daniel Bryan was on this card <laughs> in a match against AJ Styles. Justin Labar made that match. The jerk. And um, no one <laughs> called him on it because we didn't know. Um, he's just in the bar. He's got um, I, I called him on it. Well, there was not a large enough outcry to make him go back to the drawing board. So, oh, well. So it sat on the uh, Mayhem Mania. It survived a couple of rounds, and then it got evicted um, during round four last week. And people were wondering, well, what would have happened if Daniel Bryan were still on the card? And now we're sitting here, and we know he's physically unable to, um, to compete, to wrestle, because – because, John, you see, you see, John, in Mayhem Mania, you must operate within the bounds of the current reality. All wrestlers come in their current emotional, financial, physical, and contractual position. Um, That's what she you said. have to play by Vince McMahon's rules. So you can't take somebody from Lucha Underground, and you can't make the unhealthy healthy again. So if you want to put Steve Austin on this card – this whole panel is going to call BS because Steve Austin's got a busted neck and he's never wrestling again. Well, I'm choosing On the, other, well, 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 on the other hand, last year we had multiple instances of super old retired wrestlers like well, Sean Michaels and Rick Flair being put on this card. And I'll tell you why we let that slide because as heinous as it is that any wrestler was disregard a hallowed retirement stipulation, let's face the facts. They could do it. It could happen. So we let it slide. So basically, it could happen. It's allowed on the card. If it can't happen, it's never happening. It's not allowed on the card. Okay. Speak your piece, boys. Okay. Well, why is Hornswoggle on the card? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Last week, Cause, um, we cause made a terrible isn't mistake. Fired? We, last week, we like, – what? No, he's, he's still employed. No, I think no, – no, I, I think Riz is fired. fired. I think he's fired. No, I thought he was on suspension. I think he might be suspended. Uh, maybe, I'm yeah. about to Wikipedia Hornswoggle. I believe that. <laughs> but, um, guys, guys, it was a short suspension, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I believe that. Well, like, guys, it was fun. I'm going to be out here now. Uh, don't ever call me back. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I checked the official WWE.com roster, and I believe Hornswoggle is still on there. Is he still so, on there? Okay. I believe he right, is. Yeah. So if someone wants to double check my work, you're welcome to do that. But. Uh, other than that, anyway, here's the deal. Okay, Mayhem Mania. It's kind of a competitive thought experiment. The goal is to create the best WrestleMania card possible in real life, not necessarily to predict what WWE is going to do. We're going to make it better. It's going to be better than WrestleMania. It's going to be a Mayhem Mania. Bobby laughed at that. And um, so basically we get eight matches. Um, every week we invite five or six people on and all six of you will get to make one change to this current card. Mm. You can either swap one for one or tag team for tag team between matches. You, for example, you can flip AJ Styles with Enzo and then we'll get Enzo Amori versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And you can wow. with, um, Colin Cassidy. And that would be, I don't know how that would work. You, you can't tease that one. I think I want to see that now. Um, you could trade out a match entirely, bring in a new match with completely new people, or you can simply add someone who isn't on the card into a match and make it more convoluted than it already is, um, per se, four-way, five-way, six-way, which is kind of looking like the way things are heading on this. Um, John, don't create a battle royal. Everyone will hate you for that. Okay. No 30-minute battle royals. Ah, it's just a little joke. Um, yeah. Oh, this week, Mad Mike is going last. The reason is because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If someone makes a change on this card, 
And before the round ends, someone comes in and undoes that change and makes their own damn change. For example, um, somewhere around here, um, I don't know, like AJ Styles was wrestling uh, Daniel Bryan. And someone came in and said, no, Daniel Bryan's gone. I want Rusev. And then someone came in and said, nah, nah, screw Rusev. I don't want Rusev. I want Nakamura. Well, what about the poor bastard who wanted Rusev? Well, here's what we do. We automatically invite you back. So basically, if your move gets undone before the end of this round, you will be automatically invited back, and you will get the guaranteed last spot in the following round. That way, your next move can't be undone. That's Matt, what happened to Bad Mike last week. Matt, we, we are calling that officially the Alex Cars. The Alex right? Cars rule, yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. I felt like that wasn't quite – enough of an incentive for people not to undo other people's moves. Hmm. So I'm adding to the Alex Carr's rule and this will be in concert with the return of the jar of mid carters. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, I know we know this game has a lot of stipulations. Well, <laughs> it gets a little this, bit more complicated. This is becoming like more and more John, like Calvin Ball and I love it. John, John, are you still with us? Are you with yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to soak it all in and, and think. All right. Essentially, all right, here's the, here's the deal. Mad Mike got screwed last week. It was a shame. He's going to get to go dead last this week so that his move will actually stick. But I don't want it to happen again this week. I don't want moves being undone before the round is even over. So I want everyone to understand that if it happens again, and this is going to be the first week it does happen, oh. Mad Mike, not only do you get to go dead last, you get to decide who will receive the punishment. Ooh. That's right. Whenever someone Ooh. has forced to go in last place, they will be the one to administer the punishment, be it Ooh. the Jar Mid Carters or any of the other wacky punishments that I'm cooking up in my little brain. Man, that, that, is, that, that, is, that is very, very interesting. So hopefully this will help keep you guys in line. Mad Mike, instead of the hands of fate, it will be by your hand that you decide which one of these five poor bastards will be forced to draw from the jar of mid carters. Will it be Eamon Payton? Will it be the Riz? Will it be I love you, man. Arza? Will it be our glorious and benevolent overlord, Orgatron? Or will it be new guy, John Fisher? <laughs> new guy. New guy. Well, I, John, I will not saddle you with the jar of mid carters. You are safe. However, all these other fuckers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's it just because it'll make the midweek war so much more fun. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. There's two of you. There are two of you. <laughs> there's, only, there's only one guy who likes it here. I was gonna say, <laughs> let's see who likes Bailey more. That would be Eamon. So Garza, guess oh, what? Oh. You get the jar. All right. Okay. 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 Garza, this is going to be exciting. I can't wait to draw one of these fantastic ten names for you. Okay. Eamon, you are going Eamon. first. The Riz is on deck. Eamon, mm. while you ponder, I will recap the card for everyone. Samoa Joe versus The Undertaker. Tyler Brought to you Breeze. by Lucha Underground. Brought to you by, by Lucha Underground. Tyler Breeze <laughs> versus William Regal. The New Day versus Enzo and Big Cass. Bailey mm-hmm. versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha versus Char Char. Charlotte. Finn Balor versus Sam. Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Dean Ambrose versus Triple H versus Hornswoggle. Just because you didn't want to see somebody in a suit that you normally <laughs> suit hasn't been in a suit. Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. And Roman Reigns and The Rock versus Luke Harper and Vince McMahon. John, don't ask how that happened. It's just kind of the way the game works. Fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. It's good, right? Um Amen. John looks very scared, by the way. I, well, you know what? After a few, after four moves, I think he'll have uh, a good idea of what he wants to do this time. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Mm-hmm. You're up, pal. Pal. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, say there's a tag team match on this show. Yeah. Is there a possibility that I can make it a six-man tag and mm-hmm. add another teammate to do so? I can't let you add one to each side in the same move. I can let you add one to one side. 
Or I can let you add an entire team to make it a three-way tag team match. Let me let me see, tell you if I can do this. Because I it still would tell you, okay, because here's my argument. You have it listed as New Day versus Enzo and Cass. You have it listed as the whole New Day. You have it listed as the whole New Day, right? This is well, true. Like, like, there's no, there's no clarification. There is no, no clarification to whether it's. There's no. Well, there is a graphic that it strongly implies that it would be Kofi and Biggie. But you have a they point. Also but they do graphic. have. They do have Freebird rules. They do have Freebird rules. And so I don't believe add one LB. Person, if I'm just, I'm just because I have a backup. But I'm just saying, can I add one person to the other side of that tag match, making it a sick thing? As the author of the image, uh, <laughs> I only added those two guys because I was lazy to look up for Xavier Woods' image. There you go. <laughs> so it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be because of me that it's the fine. It's going to be just those two guys. So I, I'm okay with Amen yeah. considering it being three guys. Eamon of Dynasty, who you're going to add to this? I'm praying it's Carmella, so go ahead I, and make your move. Well, I'm praying it's Mark. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking it was Car. I was thinking Carmella too, and I'm like an intergender pass. That's fine, but um, uh, I'm going to go with the events of uh, uh, Raw last night. Uh, it will be the whole New Day against Enzo Amore, Colin Cassidy, and Mark. Henry. Wow. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. Eamon, Eamon, I applaud you. I'm glad I didn't give you the jar of mid-garters. I'll thank you later. There it goes. All right. The Riz is up. I'm up. Garza, you and the jar of mid-garters are on deck. Hey, um, hey, take away that Ambrose Triple H Hornswoggle match, please. The whole thing? Oh, I damn. Oh, no. thing. I had no, plans no, for that one. one. Riz. Damn thing. <laughs> All right, it's in marker now. You got to go up with something. <laughs> I would like, please. Yes, please is really going to help. <laughs> Kalisto, ooh, <laughs> in a suit. No, no. <laughs> with a little top hat on. No, no. <laughs> Versus Cowboy Cuerno. <laughs> versus Sin Cara. Oh. Oh. How does your dragons explode? <laughs> dragons explode for the United States title. Mass versus Mass. Mass versus Mass and U.S. title. Mass versus be the best slash worst match ever. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Dallas would enjoy this. I think Texas yeah. would love this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's in Texas. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm playing to the people. That's right. Play to the Tex Mex. Give you're those Tex Mex some You're in Dallas. You're in Dallas though. You're not in like South Texas. But anyway. <laughs> All right, I understand. It's, it's like saying you're this part of the South. I wonder if two Texans on this show. <laughs> Um, okay, Garza, it is time for you to have your name drawn from the Jar Mid-Carter Sorg, you're on deck. Hey, hey, by the way, please please don't show this to Jen. Oh, I, I think she'll be happy to have a fresh start because she was not pleased at all with Good, that. good. She was not pleased with Dean going up against a possible WWE champion? She was a little concerned, especially after watching Dean get battered by Brock Lesnar. She was a little concerned about his chances against Swan Swaggle. All right. Now. <laughs> Here we go. Ted Dame. Now, now if, you, if you folks uh, have been following the wait, rest wait, of the shirts, you know which Ted names are in this jar. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, is Sin Cara in one of these ones? No, Sin Cara was not in the jar. Wait, maybe he was. Let me check. Or Kalisto? No, Kalisto ain't no mid Carter man. Come on. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. I mean, no, Sin Cara wasn't in the jar. Okay, know. good. All give right. it to me. Give it to Doors me. Are, give you're it ready. Me. All right, I'm going to reveal this for everybody. Oh, baby. It's your lucky day. Oh, Axel. <laughs> the chains are off. Oh, the chains are off. The chains are off. Okay. You can work with this. You can work with this. They are off, my friend. Okay, I, I got a little story the, of how I was coming to this match. So my 
Okay, to start off, Joe Taker removed that match. <gasps> oh. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> no. We are going to get Krista Joseph to send Matanza down to eat your guts. <laughs> Uh, my gosh. Wait, wow. After after Pentagon Jr. breaks both of your hearts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and after get... Sexy Star breaks your heart. That really oh. fucks me. Do I get a lick by Chuna, though? No. Garza, are you sure you want to do this? Do it. Please, no. Yes. No, it would have been to wait. It was one month away from retirement, <laughs> damn it. Someone give him a Yeah, I don't want to see that matchup. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Garza, is this because I gave you the jar? Oh, it's so personal. Sure, I love it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, weird. so okay, now now story time with with Garza. I initially wanted to to recreate one of my fantasy matches of Kurt Angle and Daniel Bryan, but since Daniel that Bryan is now retired, uh, we cannot do it. Then I thought, oh well, I can do Chris Jericho versus. Uh, Kurt Angle, but Chris, uh, I now I have to work with the with the jar of mid cars, so it's Axel. Now you've been set, you you're thinking Kurt Angle doesn't work for this company, but his more younger replacement does, and that's Chad Gable. So Ooh. now we're getting oh. Curtis <laughs> Axel versus Chad Gable. Ooh. Oh, oh, God. Hopefully, hopefully Why did you put it like that, that way. Hopefully I can come back in later weeks and just change Axel for Jericho. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I just come over this chat. <laughs> this, oh, like, this place. This is this is like, more than, like our Daniel Bryan. Yeah. What, what was hard? Bryan. What was harder? Daniel Bryan retiring or seeing Joe versus Taker bite the bullet? There. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, actually, Daniel Bryan just saying. <laughs> what? Damn you, Garza. Uh, Sorgatron, you're up. John, you are on deck. Oh, remind me again, uh, just real quick. Remind me again what the the brand new matches are. What 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 are the matches that? Oh, so which matches you don't want to undo before the end of the round because then someone will come hunting for you with a with a wheel of NXT tag teams or something like that. Right, right, right. <laughs> something like that. Um, but but just so I know who's out of play. Um, basically, um. Riz created Kalisto versus Sin Cara. Garza created Curtis Axel versus Chad Gable. And um, what's his name? Eamon added Mark Henry to uh, the Enzo and Big Cass versus the New Day. Whatever his name is. Excellent. That guy. Axel and Chad Gable. I don't. Hmm. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple different ways. But I think in the end, what we're going to do. I think what we're gonna do. I'm looking at. I'm looking at this match with Vince McMahon in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I like. I, I can't. I can't have this. The guy's 70 years old. I. I. You're, no. you're, you're no. right. Rowan Reigns has got to go. Uh. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know that that loser of the Rock should. Oh no no no. I think I think the new. No 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 no. I I, I think the new Samoan SWAT team should stay together. But um. Uh, Samoan SWAT team. <laughs> Wait, is somebody actually going to add Ming to this one too? <laughs> Please, <laughs> oh, replacing- oh, does he have a legend? Tell me you're replacing Vince and Harper with the Usos because that will be. <laughs> can we, can we, can we, can, does, does Ming? Does King Haku have a legends contract? Does it count? Is, is, he, is, is he in there? Last big show. Does, does anybody have a Ming super card uh, that, that, that 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 makes you think that he signed with the company? Um, no, uh, no, we're going to take out. We're going to ask Vince. No, 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 no. That's not happening. That's not happening. Although I may, I may, I don't know if this is a this is a better age choice. But since he just he just came in play, I'm going to throw the Undertaker in that spot. Ooh. Make up you're your story. Out Vince, and you're replacing him with the Undertaker. Yes, yes, and you can <laughs> tag team the Undertaker and Luke Harper. Make up your storyline. In my mind, something happens where Luke Harper. Uh, again, kind of talking that Daniel, he's the next Daniel Bryan thing that we talked about in Big Question, and and, right. uh, and 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 somehow he aligns with the Undertaker, and make up your storyline from there. I don't know. Man, I just... it, man it actually makes more sense than Luke Harper, and Vince McMahon. <laughs> it really does. We could have gotten corporate Harper. You didn't want to <laughs> see that. I had him in a suit. He was in a suit. Uh, He's not in a suit anymore. If, if I can, can I tell you the, the the decision I was going to make going into this? Sure. I was going to replace Hornswoggle 
with Mark Henry in the salmon suit. Oh, really? <laughs> it would have been easy for you, Garza. Suits. You just had to find the picture. It's it. Nothing, you didn't have to make anything. Like a suit. Yeah, you wouldn't have to hide them either. So that that that's what I got, Matt. Good job, uh, John. I uh, hope this makes sense. Mad Mike, you're on deck. All right. Well, uh, I gotta say, Garza kind of screwed me. I had something planned for Joe and Taker, but um, to no avail. Never mind. Um, mm-hmm. I have a real answer, a sarcastic answer. Um, if if I wanted to be an asshole, I'd put Titus O'Neil and Darren Young into the most. Uh, hardcore match of all time, but that's not going to happen because um, they broke up. Apparently, we didn't know that. Um, but I do want you so to make Slater Gator. It was said. Oh, I know Titus O'Neil has some breakup issues. Um, <laughs> I I want you to get rid of Breeze and Regal from me. Because Regal is injured. I'm so sad that it made it made it so long. It was about to get to it. <laughs> it was one month to retirement. Damn it! Uh, All right, uh, John, don't feel bad. You don't have to apologize. All hurt feelings are welcome. Yeah. It's fine. So, uh, I I see that Luke Harper is by himself. So no, no, no. He's no, tag team no, with the Undertaker, no. so it's okay. I meant from his family. So oh, yeah, but no oh. one wants those people. In. I I want to put Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. In a singles match versus Apollo Cruz. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now you're playing. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. That's a good play. Well played. Well played. What a well, mess, man, Mike. What Here a mess. Are. Oh. There is nothing but scorched earth. <laughs> you right now. All right. This I, is I the have, kind of killing field round I was hoping for, and we're getting it. All it. right, Matt, I, yeah. I have an opinion question for you. I have two moves in mind. Would you yes. like me to make an enemy or to make a friend? I always vote make enemies. In make okay, enemies. so that match Garza made is fucking off. Wow. <laughs> 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 there goes the Garza's going to be back. All right, that's good. That's good. I love it. That's, that's <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that match Garza made, the jar of mid cars is obsolete now. I gave him the jar. He mishandled the jar. <laughs> this is cute now. And this you is know cute. what? And you Garza. know what? Matt, to make amends, I am going to book someone from that jar. Mm-hmm. Oh. And right I? Up. No. Oh, <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to take Stardust. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give him the one-on-one match I've personally been dreaming of with Stephen Amell. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know. Didn't we have this match? Like, were we supposed to, like? This was one of the first matches that we had for the Mayhem Mania. Like, oh, that's the first one. No, it wasn't. First one. No, I don't think it was on play. No, yet. Then it was. No, then it was changed. Then no. it was changed into the gold dust. Mm-hmm. No, no. We had Stardust versus Gold Dust. I think Stardust uh, – yeah, Stardust versus Gold Dust was strong. Garza, congratulations. You'll be back next week. <laughs> Thank um, you. You go last. And uh, I will have concocted a delicious punishment for someone. Um, and maybe maybe you can help collaborate with me on, on that, um, which you think maybe would be appropriate for people. For whoever you decide to bring up, Matt, Mike, you should way. come back to next week. Yeah, yeah sure, back, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the hit. That's fine. Um, Matt, do you want, do you want to know what my other move would have been if you told me to make a friend? What would your friend move have been? I would have, I, you know, I think we can do a little bit better with AJ Styles. So I would have taken him out of the Nakamura match, and in his place, I would have put Brock Lesnar. Oh no, not like do Japan. Uh huh. Oh yeah. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. All right. So I'm going to recap the card here. It's a mess. Here we go. (laughs) It's a mess. (laughs) Stardust versus Stephen Amell. Bray Wyatt versus Apollo Crews. The New Day versus Enzo Big Cass and Mark Henry. Bailey versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha versus Char Char. Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Kalisto versus Sin Cara. Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles and Roman Reigns and The Rock versus Luke Harper and The Undertaker. Leia. 
So somebody keep in mind, Christian in that match. Keep in mind, this was the first week I think that matches could have moved up. Nothing's moving up. Oh no, no nothing's moving up this week. Everything <laughs> died. <laughs> you guys have lots of scorched earth. Um, really bad. Good times. Wow. Um, yeah, if a, if a match survives more than three rounds, it graduates to a super card of you know. And the and person that made that. Pray that we get eight of those cards out there. And the person who creates the match gets to come back and create a new match the next week. We almost got Christian Joseph to come back and create a new match, but it's not going to happen now. <laughs> we could have gotten Dark. Dark so maybe maybe Ellie Eho, <laughs> Del Cueto will come back anyways. And oh, I'm, and I'm, going, I'm maybe, going to tweet him right now and tell him you, that Garza ruined his fantasy. <laughs> Ask him if he will come on the show, and then Garza, you give him the punishment. Ooh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> hey, I, I think he could do. I think Krista Joseph could do something really interesting with Adam Rose. Let's see what it was. Ask Krista Joseph hypothetically what he would do to create a match with. Just hypothetically, what would he do with this guy? What would you do with Oh, he's Slater. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. All right. That is the Mayhem Mania. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, of course, all this will be written up and graphically presented thanks to uh, Antonio Garza of the WrestlingRevolution.com. Thank you so much for this kick ass graphics going on over there, uh, making that super, super awesome. Uh, so uh, it's time to end the show. It is time to find out what you all learned from wrestling. This week, who who goes first? I'll go first. All right, Car- you just learned a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know if I learned a lot, but I learned one thing, uh, or at least I remembered. Um, it never gets easy seeing a, your heroes retire. So yeah, that's it. All righty. Um, what about you, uh, Mad Mike? I I learned that. As much as we bitch about professional wrestling, and oh boy, do we bitch about professional wrestling, um, it brought us all here, it brought us all together, and we should just have gratitude for it. That's good. That's good. Uh, Matt Carlins, what did you learn? I think it's ironic that Mad Mike said that after he firebombed someone's match in Mayhem Mania. <laughs> but see, without... Without wrestling, I wouldn't have known Garza enough to chop his nuts off. That's true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Damn. We're going to find out uh, that the, the swift hand of justice uh, comes from the Southwest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what I learned. I learned that uh, Summer Rae rarely looks at the road while she's driving. I was watching that ride along last night, oh and this is some Ray on this is some Ray on ride along while she's driving. What's going on, Renee? What's going on, Renee? What's going on, on trip? Summer, you have precious <laughs> cargo. Do not do not stare at your phone while you're driving, child. Does, does he have precious cargo? Hey Matt, did, <laughs> did you also learn? Did you also learn that Wade Barrett doesn't know north from south? <laughs> he doesn't know that Delaware is not in the direction of New Jersey? No. Nope. They started speaking in tongues, in like Gaelic tongues to one another, and they had to put subtitles underneath them. What are they saying? <laughs> awesome. Uh, what about, where am I at? Where am I at? Eamon, Eamon, you're next on my list. Hi. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that even in the saddest, most grim uh, depressing moments. Uh, Daniel Bryan loves a joke about banging his wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the first that's what she said chant I've ever heard in wrestling. Yeah, that might be. Um, uh, <laughs> Riz, what'd you learn? In, in, it, it, with, with all this talk about Daniel Bryan and it, it is a sad moment that it was, I am brought back to last week when I learned that I can make anything happen in WWE 2K16. Like put the great Kali in the Bullet Club. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I sure as hell did. I saw the picture. <laughs> Are you just going to replace Bad Luck Fale? <laughs> yes. No, you team him up. 
You team up, Great Khali and Bad Luck Fale. I, I will send you a picture, Matt. Oh, geez. Is it? It's real. It's. It, yeah. <laughs> John, John Fisher of the internet at Lord. large. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, just like 2012 and 2010 and now 2016 has taught us, appreciate your heroes mm-hmm. while you can. Because mm-hmm. before you know it, Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, Edge, and Daniel Bryan have retired due to health or due to priorities. So appreciate them while they're there. Don't bitch about it. Because they'll be gone before you know it. That's right. Um, to piggyback that on a less sentimental note, uh, somebody mentioned this in the chat room earlier, but I learned that it's not over for Daniel Bryan because we'll completely see uh, uh, him on Total Divas in the future. I, I, I mentioned that sort of Yes, I yes. I, I'm somewhere, we will still get to see Daniel Bryan compost in his backyard. <laughs> Matt, that, one, that one's for you. Um, and from uh, the chats and the Facebooks, from the chats, Bobby and Riz are, jeez, I'm sorry, I see the wheels RWA and it's close enough what? to Riz and I keep screwing it up. Wheels and Bobby both said that they're grateful Dan- for Daniel Bryan um, like pretty much at the same time. That was pretty impressive uh, on, on, on the chats. But in the Facebook group at Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, uh, Cars, Alex Cars learned that uh, with just the right connection, you can get around certain tech issues to watch WWE Network. Apparently he has a firewall issue at uh, at the camp where he's working lately, and uh, now he will be able to see WrestleMania out there. Uh, Matthew Taylor and the uh, group uh, says that sometimes the show needs to take a backseat to its players, and that's okay. And it's very appropriate. Uh, Kyle on there, Mr. Coos on there, uh, learned that uh, wrestling on TV will never be the same without Daniel Bryan Danielson. Daniel Bryan Danielson. Um, also, like he's not going to have that weird backwards name anymore so it's kind of nice Brian Daniels, uh, Brian, Brian Daniels no. Daniel Brian Danielson Brianson yeah. Brian Danielson Brian Brianson um oh, anyways sure. yes. Sure, one more Daniel thing Brian I learned Brian. that was there was one more thing I learned that was way less sentimental okay Renee Young's cookie choice at roadside rest stops are on point you guys are completely- Entenmann's for the fucking win <laughs> Hey, those are, that all, all of those words totally made sense to me. Man, man you get guys that are cook- cookie, Eamon. I, I know what all of those words. Get mean. that cookie, Eamon. Yeah, that, that one's from a that, that one's that's, that's, old, a, that's an old wow. joke right there, man. Wow. Can I, can I say? Can I say you guys are completely Eat spoiling? You guys are completely spoiling that show for me right now because I haven't watched it yet, and I was going to watch it while I'm editing yeah. this show. So. Yeah, so <laughs> spoiler alert: oh. Renee Young gets cookies. Uh, uh, all the show, I don't, don't want to know about the cookies in advance, Mike. Spoiler! Spoiler alert: At the end, they arrive at their destiny. Ah! Oh. Oh, uh, guys, Tuesday. it's else. been so we, much fun. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much. I have so many people. Uh, John Fisher, I hope you come back. I hope we haven't scared you away. <laughs> Not even a little bit, although... Uh, Matt and I can't legally be in the same room together because we're competitors. So let's. Ooh. So a, 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 a digital room, we could we could talk to our lawyers. See what mm. they can do. Hey, but yeah, thank you so much. Try I out. wouldn't call it a competition. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> once already. Uh, New material. John, I'm just kidding. I John, thank you for having me. Tell us. Was before we were on. John, tell <laughs> us all the place that you are online that's kicking Matt's ass. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, that's a lot of places. So uh, <laughs> you can find me at Inquisitor.com. I do news there for wrestling. I, I write columns for SEScoops.com. And I even go into the slideshow where I'm on the richest. All wrestling, all the time. You can find me there. Awesome. Thank you so much. If I can do the rundown, thank you. Mainstream Matt uh, on Twitter, at MadMike4883, at RizPlaysGames, at Amen 2 please the WrestlingRevolution.com, also at the W Revolution on the Twitters. And did I get everybody? I think that's everybody. Oh, I'm Sorgatron on the Twitters and everywhere else, at Mayhem Show on the Twitters for the show. Follow, thank you, everybody. Follow Sawtooth Willie. It's Valentine's Day, and he's got a special message for you. Buy some chocolate! Thank you, everybody, in the chat room. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network.
Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.